Should be a good one between Usman and Edwards as you take a look at the respective tail of the tape. You see Edwards with that 19-3 record. Uh, Usman undefeated in UFC, comes in with a 20-1 mark. Height advantage goes to Edwards, but Usman has the reach edge with nine knockouts. Edwards has had three submissions. All right, let's talk about this big fight with one half of our morning combat crew, Brian Campbell. BC Usman making his sixth title defense in this rematch and chasing history. So what does this fight mean for his legacy? You know, it would certainly bring him one step closer to the direction he's going, and that's knocking on that door to be considered among the goats, the greatest to ever step foot in the cage in this sport. Now, look, that's a very exclusive club. Usually four or five names get thrown around. You know, the John Joneses, Anderson Silva's, George St. Pierre's of the world. But it's getting harder and harder to deny that Usman's on his way to joining them. Would this win be the, the final step in that? Not necessarily, but you know about the history coming in where he can equal Anderson Silva's mark for consecutive wins. We know, as you mentioned, he's unbeaten inside the octagon, which carries big weight. And if we're being honest, allows Habib Nurmagomedov, the recently retired lightweight champion, to hang in this same discussion we're talking about. I think a lot of fans, though, are looking at this fight and saying, okay, it's a rematch, but it's another rematch for Usman. Is there that real giant challenge ahead of him that could further accelerate him joining that club we're talking about. That could be the fight after this if he ends up fighting Hamzat Chemaev, who's got a matchup of his own with Nate Diaz and is really looking like the fighter to beat on the horizon for Usman. But the whole thing is clear here. At 35, you have to wonder how much longer can he stay at this form, at the top of his game, and stay motivated and keep defending. If it's not this win, it may be the one after it. That really puts any lingering doubt behind you as to whether he belongs in that discussion. If you ask me, I say he's on his way because not only is he undefeated, but outside of two close fights against Colby Covington, he's been dominant, untouched dominant across the board. And when you're comparing greatness, that matters. And the quote from him was perfect. I mean, I have to train for everyone. They only have to train for one guy. So no matter what the outcome of this fight is, what does that legacy look like right now uh right now he's certainly uh look is he entering the overall conversation of the greatest yes but i think his more immediate hurdle is is he the greatest welterweight fighter we've ever seen now sometimes some divisions have different history than others it just so happens that at 170 pounds you have that mythical figure the great george st pierre in front of him with a victory here like you mentioned that would be usman's sixth title defense gsp has a record nine in the welterweight division and having won titles in two divisions as opposed to one, GSP carries a much larger beloved nature to his character, to what he's accomplished. Once again, you're talking about Usman knocking on that door of history, not just of the greatest of all time, but in his division. What would it take? Would it take equaling the title defenses? I think in Usman's case, he's got to get by Edwards. I still think he needs to beat somebody in Chamayev, who I mentioned, who really looks like the future of the division. But after that, if you want to call him the greatest welterweight in the history of this sport, if you want to call him among the three, four, or five greatest fighters ever, again, it's going to be hard to keep him out of those conversations when he goes out there and is just unblemished, is just dominant. And while maybe in the beginning of Usman's rise, you could label him a little bit one dimension as a wrestler, the fact that he's evolved his striking to equal that in recent fights under the tutelage of Coach Trevor Whitman that's why he's pound for pound number one status. He's put on the complete game. He's a gentleman outside the cage. He's an ambassador for the sport. Again, don't put the crown on him yet, but he's getting close. Okay, so then you mentioned the rankings. I mean, where does he fit in your rankings? You know, I think that there there is a uh, there's a, a, a top five. There's an upper room. It's those names I mentioned. The GSPs, Anderson Silva, Fedor Emelianenko, Demetrius Johnson. But right behind them, we're talking about the all-time greats. There's guys like Daniel Cormier, Jose Aldo, BJ Penn, Randy Couture, luminaries, legends, who maybe not in that upper, upper room are certainly Hall of Famers, all-time greats right there. As things stand now, if Usman never fought again, he's among that group. And if you don't think so, look up in the history. How many people are 15-0 in the UFC, get all the way to champion and pound for pound, and again, barely get challenged? He was knocked down quickly by Gilbert Burns. 
He had a drag out war against Colby Covington that he won by late knockout. But we've never seen him in a questionable loss on the scorecards. We've never seen Usman have to rally back. And that, again, really means something to get him into this membership in this club. But to get to the top, maybe a little bit more work to do. And as you mentioned, BC, I mean, he's, he could tie the record with a win on Saturday. But it might be that next fight is the one that's the big one because that would potentially set a new record and certainly push him into that upper echelon. All right, let's talk about this fight. Uh, Usman won by unanimous decision back in 2015, but that was seven years ago. How do you think that this fight is going to be different? Well, it's easy to throw out that first fight. Look, not only was that seven years ago, it was Usman's second UFC fight. It was the pre early preliminary bout on the card, the third fight on the card before the fans are even in the seats. Have both fighters evolved incredibly since then? Yes, especially Usman, as I talked about in the striking. But here's why I think you do need to at least watch it and take the information that you see, because foundationally, those are still the strengths that Usman used in that first fight, which he won by a unanimous decision that he can use again. He may not lean on his wrestling style in the same all-or-nothing way he did back when he first fought Edwards, but Usman enters this fight knowing that even though Leon Edwards is better over the last seven years than he was the first time, the equation of Kamaru Usman putting on pressure and putting his opponents potentially on their back, the kind of position where they don't get up from, that's still in play for this rematch. You have to still like Usman as the favorite. You have to respect what Rocky Edwards has done to get to this point. But I would still need to see Leon Edwards make the kind of leap against the kind of elite foe that he's facing on Saturday that, frankly, he has yet to do up to this point, despite that glossy record of late, 9-0 and with one no contest in his last 10. And you see Edwards there, plus 310. Usman the favorite at minus 400. So, BC, give us a pick here. You know, I like Usman. There is this. Could this be a trap fight? Is there as much motivation for this one as there would be for a Hamza Chimaev? The answer is no. But what has made Usman so great? It's that consistency. It's probably the hardest thing to do in combat sports, especially mixed martial arts, where there's so many ways to lose. Yet Usman goes out there, mitigates the risk like a GSP, and gets the job done. I like him to win this late by fourth round submission, give or take, could be a TKO, but I think he brings this fight to the ground. I think he puts on the pressure and I think he gets him out of there. And one thing to note, Jeremy, about Usman's ceiling in terms of the greatness. Yeah, he's chasing GSP for all time welterweight great. But if you talk to Kamaru about what could be in the future for him, he is not ruled out moving up two weight divisions to challenge for the light heavyweight title because his good buddy Israel Adesanya is currently the middleweight champion and they don't want to fight each other. If he does that and wins that, take everything I just said, throw it out the window. You could be looking <laughs> at the greatest fight we've ever seen. I mean, the, the, the stats speak for themselves. Yeah, he is Brian Campbell joining us to discuss Usman versus Edwards, part of the main event this weekend at UFC 278 in Salt Lake City. Great to see you, BC. For more on this fight and others on the card, be sure to check out Morning Combat with BC and Luke Thomas. The latest episode dropping Wednesday, that previews the card's main storylines. You want to check that out. You can download and follow Morning Combat wherever you get your preferred podcast audio. You can also watch the pod on YouTube. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.